Hey guys, this is Jimmy from Digital Barn. This laptop has an Intel 9th Gen CPU inside, and we take it our daily driver for the past week. In today's video, we are going to show you guys how the Intel 9th Gen desktop CPU performs in real life as an editing machine. Without further ado, let's get started. In this video, on one hand, we'll see how it stacks up with last gen laptop CPU i7 8750H and i9 8950HK on full performance output with power plug. On the other hand, we'll see how it performs with solely battery and compare it with an ultra low power chip i5 7200U. That's what happens when you are working at Starbucks or on the plane. Here we have some benchmark and Adobe Premiere results for your reference. The laptop model we have is Destroy KP2 from Shenlong, a company from China. This interesting machine has an Intel 9th gen desktop CPU i5 9600K in it, and this chip is overclocking a lot. Pairing this chip, we have an overclocking GTS 1060. Besides that, we have an 8GB single channel DDR4 2600 memory, as well as 500GB SSD. The external power brick is 230 watt and the battery pack is 65 watt hour. Okay, we are now on the desktop of the laptop. You can see that we are running the i5 9600K with clock frequency at 4.4 GHz. Because in the control center, we set this laptop at high performance mode. Let's check the idle temperature first. The room temp is 26 degrees Celsius and you can see that and the CPU is only 40 some degrees Celsius and we can barely hear the fan noise of the laptop. Intel did a very good job on the power control on the idle state. Okay, let's jump to the Geekbench 4 test first. Before the test, I want to mention that in this system, there is only an 8 gig single channel DDR4 memory. To a certain degree, the performance release of the system will be kept by the memory. So keep that in mind. Let's get started. We can see that during the test, the CPU usage is not that high. The clock frequency can keep at 4.4 GHz. Let's fast forward a little bit. From time to time, we can see that the power release of the CPU can up to 80 watts. That's already pretty good in a laptop system. And the CPU frequency is around 4.1 to 4.6 GHz. And the most important thing is, during the test, the fan keep quiet and the temperature keep cool. Up to this moment, I can't really tell the difference between a desktop CPU and a mobile CPU at the temperature and power control. Okay, finally we got 5200 on single core and 18000 on multi-core. The single core score is pretty close to i9-8950HK. However, the multi-core score is only close as i7-8750HK. Compare the result on the Geekbench library, we can see that there are almost 20% drop on the performance due to the single channel configuration. Okay, let's jump to Cinebench R15. You can see that from the ranking, last time we got a score at 935. How much we get this time? Let's see if the result is consistent. Okay, let's get started. Compared to Geekbench 4, the Cinebench R15 is absolutely a process-hungry application. You can see that you almost eat up 100% of CPU resource. Okay, this time the CPU clock is dropped down to 3.7 GHz. At the beginning, the power output of the CPU was up to 80 watts for about 20 seconds, and then finally stable at 65 watts. This time, the CPU temperature reaches about 80 degrees Celsius and the fan noise starts to kick in. However, the clock frequency keeps pretty consistent, upper than the base clock 3.7 GHz. Finally, again, we got a score at 935. This time, it's about 10% lower than the i7-8750H. Considering the CPU is running at 65 watts, that's even 10 watts higher than the 8750H. I guess the gap is because of the single channel memory configuration. 
Okay, let's jump to Adobe Premiere Pro. As a YouTuber, we do video editing on Adobe Premiere Pro day to day. So a faster system will make our workflow much smoother. That's the reason I sourced this laptop. Now let's open a project with 4K footage from Panasonic GH5 and see how it performs. This 4K footage is contributed by a famous photographer, Luke. If you are interested, you can download the footage on the link below and test your system yourself. In this project, on top of the high bitrate 4K footage, we apply a Lumetri color grading, sound effect, text overlay, as well as a 3D transition effect. Try to emulate the cases we handle YouTube videos projects day to day. Okay, let's see how it performs in rendering this project. In the setting page, we choose the output format as H.265 with high bitrate, and we enable the hardware acceleration with the Intel UHD 620 integrated graphics. However, because this project is so complex with multiple effects, so the hardware acceleration only helps a little bit. So keep in mind, most of the rendering process is still done by the CPU software calculation. So let's get started. We can see that the CPU and GPU usage remains really low, and the clock frequency keeps at 4.4 GHz pretty good. Looks like Premiere Pro doesn't get most out of the resource in this kind of project, and the CPU output power is jumping up and down around 20 watts. The temperature remains pretty cool. Okay, let's fast forward and see how long it takes. We can see that the CPU frequency remains high at 4.4 GHz during the whole rendering. The temperature also keeps very cool. Finally, the process finished in 7 minutes 50 seconds. I would say that's reasonable on this kind of spec. Okay, let's go to part 2, performance on the battery mode. Okay, we removed the power brick. In the old days, that's the key difference between desktop CPU and mobile CPU in the laptop. Sometimes, desktop CPU performs worse but takes more juice. Let's see if Intel 9th gen desktop CPU can make a difference this time. We set the battery profile at better performance, and we can see that the battery level is at 95%. Let's run the Geekbench 4 again. We can see that, even in the battery mode, the clock frequency can still boost up to 3.7 GHz. In most of the time, it bounces in between 0.8 to 3 GHz. From the spec, we know that the mean operation frequency of the i5 9600K is 800 MHz. That's the same as the H series mobile CPU. This time, the power output is around 20 watts, and you can barely hear the fan noise. From a behavior, we can't really tell the difference about this desktop CPU and its mobile version. Okay, here we have it single core at 4000 and multi core at 10,000. That's still faster than the MacBook Pro I was using right now under power mode. How about the power consumption? We can see that the battery level now is 93. That means the whole process takes up 2% of battery. In other words, this laptop can compete 50 Geekbench 4 tests within one battery cycle. But how it compare with the latest Ultrabook CPU under battery mode? Here we have ASUS Ultrabook UX310 with a 157Wh battery featuring Intel 7 Gen i5-7200U. Let's see how they stack up at Geekbench 4 under power mode. We set the battery profile at better performance and we can see that before the test, the battery level is 95%. Without further ado, let's get started. The i5-7200U is a 15W CPU with turbo boost up to 3.1GHz and we can see that the CPU usage is apparently higher than the 9600K. Let's fast forward. Finally, the 72000U got a single core 3500 and multi core at 6700. That being said, the 9600K got 30% more performance under battery mode. How about the battery consumption? Well, this time the 720U wins. It takes only 1% to complete the test. But considering the 9600K is such a power horse, the battery result is actually not that bad. Part 3, let's add one more test. 
Adobe Premiere Pro under battery mode. As a YouTuber, sometimes you have to rush some jobs when you commute. Here we run the same project as in part 1 and see what the battery it takes to render this video. Before the test, the battery level is at 87%. Let's get started. We can see that during the process, the CPU frequency is bouncing around 2 GHz. Let's fast forward. Finally, the rendering completes under 9 minutes. That's only 40 seconds longer than the power plug mode. And the battery consumption is about 8%. In other words, the 9600K can almost sustain 2 hours Adobe Premiere jobs, even the intensive rendering process. Here comes the conclusion. Although the 9th gen i5 9600K is a desktop CPU, but Intel did a very good job on power saving design. We still get pretty good performance release with all battery condition. That means you still can get some serious job done outside if you are not able to choose your laptop. From our prelim results, you can almost get 2 hours of working time on Adobe Premiere. A little pity though on today's video is that all results are getting from a single channel memory system. In such case, the 9th gen i5 9600K is only cached last gen mobile i7 8750H. However, from our experience, Intel high end CPU will have 10 to 20% performance boost on dual channel DDR4 memory configuration. So, we ordered another 8GB DDR4 memory for this system. In next video, we have a performance comparison on Intel 9th gen CPU with single channel and dual channel system. See if this 9th gen i5 9600K can beat last gen i9 8950HK. Stay tuned for more. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thumbs if you like it, subscribe our channel, and I'll catch you in the next time.